Massimo, I've been getting bored with the question of evolution and religion. Um, a lot of people I talk to because they're nice people just want to harmonize and make everybody happy. And you know, you can have yours, I'll keep mine, <laughs> type of thing. Uh, what's your what's your view? What has been your view towards uh, um, the supposed controversy or the conflict or the just you know independent magisteria of evolution and religion? Yeah, there are no independent magisteria, <laughs> as far as I can tell. <laughs> Uh, religion is obviously a human invention. Uh, it probably uh, does respond to deep uh, psychological needs that humans have for meaning, for survival after death, because consciousness makes us uh, you know, aware of the fact that, right. that we're going to be uh, gone one of these days. And we don't like, some, for some reason, we don't like that idea. So there's no question in my mind that religion is an important psychological and, and sociological and phenomenon, which of course has political consequences, has had political consequences. But in terms of actually being a thing that we, we really need to respect some kind of uh, magisterium, as Stephen Jay Gould famously put it, uh, that is separate from that of science, uh, there is no such a thing. I mean, the only, the only suggestion one can reasonably make, and that in fact is what Gould has made, is that science deals with facts, with empirical the empirical world, with understanding the world as it is, and religion deals with morality, ethics. Uh, we all do respect to Stephen Gould, uh, where the heck is philosophy there? It's philosophy that deals with ethics, not religion. Uh, religion is certainly can be understood as a subset of uh, one way of doing philosophy and one way to do, of doing ethics. But the broader set to which religion belongs then is the general, general branch of ethics within philosophy. So. And even that one is not separate because then we have to ask ourselves, well, what, where do we get our ethics? Where is it that our morality comes mm. from? And there I tend to favor a evolutionary. Yeah, of course. <laughs> got and then there are nice stories that you can tell, whether they're just so nice stories Correct. or real stories. That's, a that's different, an different issue. Different issue, but, but there are stories. There are stories. And they do, they, they do make sense. That's why they're called right. just so sometimes. Right. I uh, also happen to think that morality, so morality and ethics, in my mind, then, are essentially the same thing. Uh, some people are trying to make a distinction yeah. between the two. But th I go back to the origin of those words within the Western tradition. Ethics come from the Greek ethos, uh, which uh, Cicero translated as moralis in Latin. Mm. And both terms have to do with both character and the ability to live with other people. Mm. In other words, mm. ethics or morality are uh, concerned with the problem of how do we live in harmony more or less with other human beings, which mm. because we are an uh, intelligent social species, that's a problem mm. we had to solve, right? And so it is an empirical problem to some extent. Okay, let, let me put it, it bluntly in terms of the religious positions on evolution. So first of all, we have to limit ourselves, I think, pretty much to the Abrahamic traditions because the Eastern traditions, Hinduism, Buddhism, have absolutely no problem with evolution. It's, it's uh, Correct. in fact, it's very harmonious with their cyclical approach to time and no beginning. I mean, it works very well. So there's no issue there whatsoever. So in the Abrahamic religions, I would say, to be simple, there are three different uh, positions. Uh, number one is a, a uh, well, maybe for, for the, the, some an early earth creationist, but most people put that aside. But so let's give, the, give them their due, that's number one. Number two is, a, is a, um, an intelligent design mm -hmm. uh, movement, which, which has had political consequences in the US. Uh, a third might be, uh, theistic evolution with subtleties that God can only do it at the quantum joints or, or some sophistication. Yeah. <laughs> there must be some quantum stuff going yeah, on yeah, there, because, right? Because, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you can sort of continue to make sense out of that in a closed physical system in the quantum world, but God could still have a way to do it. So that's sort of a theistic, a sophisticated theist you know, uh, uh, system, which is the third. And the fourth would be a deistic system uh, in which God set it all in motion, so it all worked exactly the way we, we, we see it. There's no intervention that God had to do, but it, God was so smart that he put the whole system together so that the gravitation and the various forces would lend itself through this random process to create what we have. So those are, that's the spectrum as I, as mm -hmm. I see it. Yeah, so, I, I think, I think that's your, reasonable. Is that, 
Is that reasonable? I mean, you, it's you, a reasonable spectrum. Now, I don't see any reason, however, to take any of those positions seriously. Uh, they do vary in degree of ridiculousness, <laughs> if you like. Uh, certainly, the the in-your-face creationism, you know, the Earth is uh, 12,000 years old or 6,000 years old, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That is empirically groundless, yeah. even not, not to mention philosophically uh, problematic, incoherent, et cetera, et cetera. When you get... You can't find enough adjectives to describe <laughs> Exactly. It. <laughs> it's, it's hard to, to, to find yeah. enough adjectives. Now, if you move toward the other, in, a, in the progression that you just outlined, of course, the one that is most difficult to reject is the deist uh, position, right? Sure, if God just exists, created the universe, and then yeah. essentially retired, uh, then you know what do, what do we have to say about it? Mm. Well, the only thing we have to say about it is why are you even talking about God in the first place? I mean, essentially, what you're describing is the universe came in, into being somehow because you know to put the label God there doesn't actually explain anything. Uh, one of the interesting things in um, philosophy of religion is that sometimes people think seem to think that uh, to say God did it is an actual explanation. It's not. It's just a label for yeah. our ignorance. It's like, oh, well, brrr, and then God did it, right? That doesn't do anything. So we're labeling a lack of information or lack of understanding with the word God. But there is really no point in bringing up that magic word just because it makes feel people better or it's ecumenical or it's whatever it is. It doesn't do any actual work in terms of science, in terms of understanding, in terms of anything that, that, that we're talking about in this, in this context. So if people want to use the label God in a deist sense or in a theist sense because it makes them feel good, they of course have a right to do it, but it just doesn't help. It doesn't do anything. Philosophers of religion who are believers would say there is one area where it does help, and that is that everything we're describing in evolution is, is contingent and you cannot have a, 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 an infinite regress of contingency, you need some necessity to begin the process, which has no reason to be a theistic God or a God of a particular scripture, but it would have to have some sort of uh, uh, necessary being uh, to, to be there, not a being in a personal God sense, a necessary being can be the laws of physics, uh, but a necessary being has to be there, and some people would then argue that it has to have the, uh, the, the personhood of, of, uh, of what has been called a, a creator. But the transition, the, the need for a necessary being to explain uh, or, or, and to, or to reject an infinite regress of contingent beings is the, is the work that it would do. Right, but that, the whole thing is predicated on a principle of sufficient reason that has been articulated by plenty of philosophers mm -hmm. from the ancient Greeks and Romans up yeah. to Leibniz. And there is no particular reason to believe that yeah. the principle Especially is true. Especially about the totality. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you, you, you may argue that for everything in the totality. Absolutely. But, but not the totality itself. But for itself. the totality itself, it's, this is it's, just an assumption. It's a way to sneak in your yeah. preferred conclusion and <laughs> say, oh, well, since that principle is true, <laughs> then, aha, gotcha. But that it really is, is more of a parlor trick than, uh, or, or a rhetorical trick uh, than anything else. And in terms of, you know, something has to have things started. And then from there you go to the God of the Abrahamic traditions. That's such a huge leap. It's not a leap, it's multiple leaps. It's multiple <laughs> leaps, that's right. And, and of course, plenty of good philosophers have argued with each one of those, those steps. But since I reject the principle that gets you there, that gets the whole thing started in the first place, then I'm, I'm just not concerned.